right, so here we're looking at the linear actuator, and um, some of these actually are adjustable with some different uh, cam type lobes on the back side here. Uh, this one is not, it's all uh, metal gears in here. It looks uh, fairly good, it's, uh, they're greased up pretty good. <clears throat> what the problem is, is this is a two inch stroke and the spreader only has about a one inch uh, opening. The, the stroke on the gate is about a one inch stroke. They do sell some uh, one inch actuators. Uh, they are significantly more pr uh, higher priced than what I've found this one for it was about 35 bucks uh, which probably is because of this reason so this is the full out position which is the way I've set the, sp the uh, gate to be fully closed at the full out position and then it'll come in and this is the full in position so what I need is I need this in position switch right here to be engaged. Um, so it, with this setup, either you need to move or have another um, one of these. If you had another one of these that could travel and you could set both positions, that would be ideal. Um, but I don't see that. I don't see a way to do that right here. If you had that, you could put a spacer in the middle here and then they would ride back and forth. I think it would work that way. But I think what I'm gonna to have to do is actually uh, remove this solder joint here. There's two points. There's the, the red wire coming in right there. And there's two solder joints right here that I'll have to dis, uh, desolder and actually move the switch up. This um, little plastic rail needs to remain in place because it fits in the housing. It fits right into this housing here. You can see see that right there. So that rail is going to ride in that housing and it needs to be that, that proper length um, in order for that to work. It would have been nice if they would have left some room for adjustment here, either on this switch activator um, or, or, or e even be able to move the switches back and forth. But, you know, probably for the price and all, this does function if you had a two inch um, stroke that you needed. So, Okay, so I got my solder sucker here. The thing with this is it's got to be really hot in order to work. Um, so we'll see if we can get this in here and try not to damage that wire or the plastic. Clean the end with the wet rag. on that plastic so we may have to reform that we'll see Bend it just a little bit more okay there's our little limit switch so what I need to do is move it right there so that I'll have I'm going to measure because this is what 
three eighths. So it's actually I need to be an inch and three eighths. So let me mark position there. There and right there. Okay, so if I if I can get a slot there, there, and there, I think I'll be in good shape. Then I'll have to add up I need to add a little piece of wire onto this onto the red. Alright, so we got a little piece of wire here and I'm going to put a little piece of heat shrink on it. Um, I'm going to tin the end here and then put a little solder on that wire. There we go. And now I'm going to solder this wire together. And yes, it is black, and this is a red wire. Okay, that's together. But I'm going to try to use this to make these holes. Whew. Nasty. Okay, it did work. A lot of effort to go through just to make this a one inch actually. Okay, let's see here. I'm trying to get that to sit down flat. It's not quite there yet. Okay, now I need to move this diode in between the two points, so I'm going to have to sharpen this wire. I'm going to make that to where it'll catch there. I'm just going to cut it off right here, and then try to feed it through that eye. successful. Now if I could feed the diode through there. Alright, so we got our crude soldering done. We got our last little bit and I really need to get a smaller tip on here but this is what I had on there and it's hot, so I need to drink some more water. I've got some coffee going. Coffee shake. Man, bad. Whoop. Okay. That's better. Let's see. Okay. Got a nice little bead there. Got that soldered up. Everything's soldered back like it was. So what I did, I had this kind of boogered up. I took the end cap off and um, 
tried to see if I could run this through there. Let's see, it goes this way. Um, run that plastic through there. And I took my heat gun and heated that plastic up because it was all offset where I had heated it up with a soldering iron. As I heated it up, then I kind of pushed it in and made sure it was free. And so I got it fairly straight. It should be, should be good enough now. Okay, so we got our switches moved. Let's turn this over and, and uh, fish our wire through there. Got our little heat shrink in there. Get all the wires fished in. Now the test to see if this is going to function properly. And I'm hoping it will. It looks like it's going to catch right there. That should be perfect. And the, that track is just a little off due to my big goober soldering iron. Okay, so we're back together. Let's put the end cap on. And the screw goes in the end. So this linear actuator is adjustable. You just have to have a little bit of want to get that lined up. Okay, get the set screws here and here. And there's our mark right there, so we'll see how well we did. Okay, so let's operate that actuator to the full limits. All right, we're going to come closed. And that's full closed on the limit switch. And that's come open. And that's fully open. So it's perfectly set. Um, the only problem that I can see, I don't know if the way I uh, adjusted it or whatnot on the limit switches, is there is just the slightest crack right here. You can see the slight crack. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I think I have enough adjustment in the hitch, the two hitch bolts. So I'll loosen that and see if I can close that gap. I hope you like this video. hope this helped you out with uh, uh, at least maybe give you an idea uh, on how to fix this problem. Thanks for watching.